the British Museum, standing in front of the Holy Thorn Reliquary, which was commissioned by Jean Duc de Berry. It's from about the 1390s in Paris, and this is quite a piece of work. It's exquisite. There's an awful lot of detail here. I suppose we should just start working from the bottom up. We've got the city in gold, and it's the four-cornered cities. It's like the four corners of the world. And there's an angel at each corner blowing a trumpet. And then around that we have this green hill with where four tombs with yeah, people arising out of them people. looking up above that we've got the central panel which is surrounded by rubies and pearls and lots of gold mm -hmm. and there are 12 figures who are the 12 apostles picked out in enamel and gold surrounding the central panel and right in the center we have christ sitting in majesty with his feet on the globe and above that at the very top we've got god the father and then there are these two sapphires they're the only two sapphires in the whole piece one is at the very very top above god the father and the other one is in the middle of this window where the christ figure is sitting and there's this two inch long piece of wood jutting up into christ and christ is sitting on a rainbow and right above christ there are these two little angels holding holding a tiny, tiny crown of thorns above his head, and that is connected to what this spike coming out of the sapphire is. It is supposedly one of the thorns that came from the crown, the crown of thorns. thorns. We're obviously looking at a reliquary here. The idea of reliquaries in the Middle Ages is really important because it was these physical objects, which were sometimes body parts of saints. In this case, it's a thorn from the crown of thorns. These objects were used as focusers of spiritual contemplation. We're really looking here at where relics began because Christ died on the cross and then he rose into heaven. So he left nothing behind. So all the relics that are connected to Christ are things like the crown of thorns or pieces of the true cross. Objects that are material memory. And of course, we have no way of proving whether this was in fact a thorn from the crown of thorns worn by Christ when he was crucified. No. But that wasn't the point. The idea was you believed in these objects. And science, as we know, didn't exist in those days. So to pray or to be in the presence of this object is to give you extra power and special access to heaven. Christ and the Passion, all this happened within the Roman Empire. The crown of thorns was discovered by Constantine's mother, the Empress Helena, who went on pilgrimage, and she found the crown of thorns and the true cross as well. These were taken back to Constantinople, and so the Byzantine Emperor had all of the power, which of course this is what made the rest of Europe extremely jealous of the power that Constantinople had, and that's why they came and sacked Constantinople, and that's when these things got taken away. This reliquary he starts with one of the French kings, Louis IX, who, as he saw it, rescued this crown and brought it to Paris. And then the greatest gift that he could give to anyone would be to take one of the thorns and make a gift of it. And that's what he did here. It's spiritual, but it's also political control, because if someone gives you a gift of something so close to Christ, that's irreplaceable. So here we've got Jean, Duc de Berry, who's one of the French dukes. And it's such an important gift for both religious and political reasons that he's made this incredible casing to house this one relic. And you see the story of the Last Judgment, because that's what's going on here. These angels at the bottom are trumpeting to wake people up. You see the dead rising out of their coffins. From the four corners of the earth. And then in the center, there's this scene of Christ enthroned. And it's important with a reliquary, because without all of this gold and, and sapphires and pearls, without all this paraphernalia, around it. If you just had that thorn, how would you know what it was? You know what it is by the casing that holds it. And people at the time would have as well, because this was not an audience who was literate. What you mostly get is the story being told by the object itself. And, and people would have been to church and heard these stories, the stories about the Last Judgment and Christ enthroned. It's like a picture book for an audience looking at this at the time, regardless of all of that gold work and any of those jewels, the most valuable object in this entire piece is that one bit of thorn. That's had the sweat and the blood of Christ exactly. upon it. There is so much tiny, tiny detail in the way that everything is made. The hair and the beards, the carving of the leaves. If you look at these two kneeling figures at Christ's feet, the way that their clothing has been picked out and the individual fingers that you can see in their praying hands. It's a really nice combination of both an object of faith and a beautiful object of craftsmanship.